Hi there, welcome to this YouTube video. Hi guys. <laughs> uh, today is interesting. Um, this is a video I've been wanting us to do for a while. It is titled, what is it titled? What men and women need. What men and women need. In marriage. In marriage, in marriage maybe majorly. But of course, even if you're not married, you can start to learn yeah. ahead of time. Um, <laughs> So it, we're basically looking at what men need, what women need, you know, all right, uh, and all that. Okay. <laughs> and we have seven each. Uh, at the beginning, we're wondering whether we should do the videos separately, as in just do a video for men and do a video for women. Mm. But Pastor Mother felt she doesn't want anybody to miss on the video so that somebody won't say, oh, I don't want to watch what women need. I just want to know. So it's good for the couple to watch this together. <laughs> together. So that you will hear what your partner needs and also hear us describe what you need. Wait, you said Pastor Nude felt. You don't f agree? Yeah, well, who am I? Ah! <laughs> okay. To argue, yeah, yeah, to argue. Let's, let's get to it. <laughs> no, well, you brought the idea now. You yeah, but do you agree? Yeah, I think it's okay. It made sense. That's why I'm here now. Okay. If it didn't make, make sense, I wouldn't have agreed now. But I think it makes sense. Um, you know, so that we can watch it together. Yeah. All right. So, interestingly, we have seven each. So, I don't know if everything went out one video. If it doesn't have one video, there will be part two. But anyway, uh, we have seven each. And um, these are things we feel um, men want and women want. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to also understand that there will be exceptions. There are always oh, exceptions. Yeah. You see, and exceptions don't necessarily cancel the rule. Mm -hmm. All right? Because some people are just like that. If this is, I know one uncle that didn't like, no. That's not how it works, all right? <laughs> For us that are professionals, uh, we factor in a lot of things. Uh, the bulk of, so if we say the bulk of men want something, you can't say, oh, my husband doesn't want it. Yes, that, that's your husband. So there's room for individuality, but that doesn't cancel the general rule. All right, most of these things are things that the large population of men or women uh, would agree with, all right? So let's give room for the exceptions, all right? We already know that the exceptions, your own husband or your own wife might not need one or two of these things. But largely, this is how men and women, um, you know, think and what they desire. Yeah, and I also think that it's important that we emphasize that we're not saying that when we say men need something, it doesn't mean women don't need it. We're yeah. just saying at a larger degree yes. that women or this particular gender yeah, needs, needs this more. more. Okay. Yeah, so very important. And this list is not in any way exhaustive. Yes. So you can add your own list to your, in fact, to your spouse, you should, you should add. add your own list. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's how it is. Love is always customized to the person um, in question. So hmm. I like that. Love yes. is always customized. Yes, because. Instagram post. Yes, uh, tweetable. Tweetable. Good. <laughs> <laughs> because there's some things I mentioned. Your husband or wife might not even yeah. need it at all. So that happens. That doesn't cancel the rule, okay? Just find a way to make meaning of these things and most of these things are um for most of my teachings like i always like to say they're either based on number one scriptures number two scientific proof number three statistical you know statistic proof so um most of these things are covered in these three areas and this is after over um 20 years of doing this job so we don't just cook these things up it doesn't work that way it's not just a matter of my opinion it's based on it's based on um, facts and studies over a period of time so let's start Ladies first. No. Ah. After men. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> okay, I'll start with number one. Number one need of a man from our, and not necessarily in, in order of importance, okay? So, but number one need of a man here, that I, if I was going to talk to women, is what I would tell them men need. Number one is respect. <laughs> Respect. I literally felt some women roll their eyes. I'm telling you, this always causes <laughs> war. That you say women don't need respect. That, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not how this works, okay? Yeah. Um, everybody needs respect. Even animals need respect. Yeah. Everybody needs respect. So that's not what we're talking about. When, we are, when, when we're painting this picture, there is um, a point to it. And we didn't just cook up these things. Um, first of all, scripture supports this um, Ephesians chapter 3 the whole um, there's the marriage treatise there but even specifically in chapter in verse 30, 33 Ephesians chapter 5 um, there's a treatise there from verse 22 down to 33 but um, we're focusing on 33 specifically now um, it makes it clear that all of you the Bible said you men should love your wives and it said you women see to it that you respect, respect. 
your husband. So it's specific. There's no way in scripture you see God speak to men and women the same in marriage. He always tells them different instructions. Why? Because they are different. different. It's very simple. Men and women are incredibly different. Very different. In fact, there's little or nothing we really have in common. We're so different. So different from childhood to even when we grow. That's a whole new book, uh, Pink and Blue, our book on Pink and Blue. But we don't want to get into that today. But the point is that men and women are very different. So God was saying here that respect is a major need for men. Men um, do everything they do for honor. So this respect we're talking about is not just that. It's not that it, make, it means a woman is less of a man. No, no, no. That's not what it's about. It's that men do things for honor. You need to realize it. The reason why women do things and just why men do things are very different. Women are at their peak when they are doing things for love. Men are at their peak when they're doing things for honor, to defend their integrity and honor. That's how men are. So if you see a lot of things men do, they are bragging rights. They do dangerous things just to have bragging rights among their friends for honor. You know, they do things like that. So... Uh, men want to get money because they equate getting money to getting power and they equate power to getting respect. So that's how it works. So everything men do, you know, is tied to this respect factor. All right. And God knows that. That's why God told me, look, I'm giving you the expo right now. One of the major needs of this man is respect. And he, on the other hand, told the women their own, that the need of woman is love. All right. They, they even did um, a, a survey one time amongst people that had bad relations or had trouble in their relationships and they give them options to pick and they said about over 80 percent or so of the men said how they felt was that they felt disrespected and the same in the same survey women said they felt unloved you see they had the same challenges but they read the interpretation of it differently all right women saw their own as they were unloved men saw theirs as they felt disrespected and in our years of counseling 99.9% of the men that come with their wives for counseling, they are number one complaint. She doesn't respect me. <laughs> yeah, so um, most of the people that come for counseling in all these years, <laughs> you know, uh, all the men, literally all the men, I can, I can say 99.9%, <laughs> you know. I'm just trying not to say 100%, but really, really, almost all the men that have come for counseling with their wives, their number one complaint is that she doesn't, doesn't respect, respect me. That's just it. Mm -hmm. Men equate all the problems in their relationships to respect. If she's not cooking for me, it's because she doesn't respect me. If she's not talking to me right, it's because she doesn't respect me. If she's not um, spending well, it's because she doesn't respect me. So men equate everything going on to a lack of respect. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, so women? No. <laughs> I Talk just didn't respect. Respect. <laughs> Well, I think that. I think sometimes mm. women struggle with respect because they expect that the man will always be respectable. Yeah. And, and I think that yes. the two are very mutually exclusive. Yes. That God expects you to respect him yes. as a function of your own action, not necessarily as a reaction yes. to what he does. That's so the secret. Men will not always be perfect. That's yes. the truth. Because we too will not always be perfect. Yes. And women women are okay with unconditional love. They're okay with love me no matter how. Yes. But they're not okay with respect it's him no, no matter, matter how he's behaving. So yes. The same way we, we want unconditional <laughs> love, I think we need to also give, give unconditional, unconditional respect. respect. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. it's so, master the art of talking to that man with respect, even when he's doing something that doesn't make him look so respectable, still talk to him in a respectable way. It's the quickest way to open his heart. And it's all over scripture. It's all over, you know, even um, different studies show it, that men generally will behave better when you speak to him respectfully. You see, like my Kodoku said, there's a king and a fool in every man. He says, yeah. the one you speak to that will respond to you. So when you speak to him like a small boy, you know, and even there are so many studies. Um, there's, there's one of my mentors, um, Emerson Egridge, or... Yeah. Yeah. He did such a wonder. He has a wonderful book titled Love and Respect. And there are so many studies, even with kids, they found out that as boys grow, what the boys want is respect. So the way you're going to talk to them is with respect. And as the girls grow, you know, what they need is love. So it's amazing. It's, 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 it's a great study. So basically, men need to be respected. They need to feel respected. Even when they're not behaving respectfully, talk to them with respect. And the Bible also says this in First Peter 3. You know, talks about if, you, if your husband is not obeying the word, he say you who are obeying the word, use your behavior mm -hmm. with respect. He say like daughters of Sarah, Sarah, you know who you are, that Sarah called her husband Lord. Now, you don't have to call your own husband Lord, but the point there is that Sarah had, you know, such regard for her husband. And honey, you, you also, you know, um, do that very well, you know. So maybe you should share, you know, why and how. You are able to do that because there are many times I don't behave respectfully, but <laughs> you know, 
you generally generally show respect you know i can't remember anything you've been disrespectful you know and all that but you still air your views you're not yes, a weakling you're not a pushover so yeah. how are you so i i doing? think that we also need to be able to 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 confront without being disrespectful mm -hmm. i think that you can confront an issue confront a behavior without being mm -hmm. disrespectful you can actually let your husband know that this thing you're doing i don't like it without it being insulting without you trying to demean or anything so i think what i try to do is speak to the king in you i feel like you rise up to the occasion mm. if you're respected and i tell you the things you need to do the truth is like i said your your giving respect should not be a reaction it should be an action so i think mm. that's what has helped so whether or not you're doing the right thing i think mm. i also have learned that i can't avenge disobedience until my own obedience is complete mm. so. okay all right so talk a bit about uh, <laughs> okay so for women i would say our number one need is love mm -hmm. um, and i think that that's what god asked men to do you know god asked men mm -hmm. to love and when i talk about love i'm not talking about the feeling i'm not talking about the emotion, emotion yes you know i'm talking about love in terms of respect and devotion i'm talking about it in terms of responsibility um, we want you to be responsible for us responsible for our family responsible for your actions respe mm -hmm. responsible for your behavior responsible mm -hmm. for your personality i don't want to train my child and train you you know part mm -hmm. of loving me is that you you want to groom me that you are a groomsman you know yes. you want to cultivate me yeah. you want to make me better Husband you are man. rooting for me mm -hmm. you are supporting me you are you are you are showing me leadership you mm -hmm. know and you're not intimidated you are secure giving me a um, giving me a perfect atmosphere to grow and to blossom mm. okay mm. so those are some of the things that i think women want women want you to speak to them um from a place of love to deal with them from a place of love to be more understanding and if you read first corinthians 13 it's very clear what god expects the man to do for his wife and that's what we expect to be patient i see a lot of men you know being very impatient with their wife she wakes up early in the morning she's doing everything getting the kids ready doing everything and you are not doing anything to help and yet you're screaming at the top of your lungs how she's making you late to church i will leave you i will leave you be patient be kind mm. kindness insinuates that the person is not really deserving of it but be kind to your wife even when she doesn't deserve it you mm. know don't keep records wrong interestingly a lot of people say that women nag but some men can give you details in 1926 yeah. <laughs> when the sun was shining yeah. my grandfather was passing the moon yeah. then the tortoise met the rabbit that's yeah. when you distress <laughs> you know they can do all those kind of things it just seems like because women are da, 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 da. Yeah. so it sometimes seems like we are the ones that are but women want a man that can make them blossom over yes. the years you know one of the things i've noticed is that your love for me has made me shine wow. Your love for me has made me grow. So I remember when I first got married, I was still very shy. Mm. Still very, very shy, still very reserved. And you kept saying, and I was content to just help build your dreams, content mm. to just help us be everything that you, you mm. felt what God was saying. And you kept, I remember you kept saying, you're too powerful to stand behind me. Mm. You kept saying that. You need to stand beside me. You're too powerful to stand. And I, and I, and I remember you also saying that you also wanted to be, a successful husband of a successful wife you used to say it a lot when we first got married ah, mm. no i don't want i don't want the woman that will be my shadow no no no. i don't want i want to stand beside me and i think that most women are looking for that most mm. women are looking for a man who will encourage their yes. dreams who would who would help them, them grow. Awesome. yes yes so so basically so when we say a woman wants love um i want to see if i can put it in more masculine language because yeah. that confuses men we want love basically a woman wants a man that will take care of her and by taking care of her, it doesn't mean she's incapable. We're not talking about her being incapable of taking care of herself. We're talking about you providing that care and responsibility and love. So um, is, that's why we are called husband. Husband is from husbandry. Husbandry is the person taking care, you know, of something. So you are cultivating her. You are building her. You're looking at her, how she came to your house. And you're saying in a few years, you want her to be much more than this. So by the time they compare how she was and how it's going you know that, that video thing you do on instagram how it started how, it started, how it's going. going there should be a very big difference yeah. from how she is so many men do the opposite try to subdue and criticize and kill their wife's dreams your job is to build her up you are she's like a garden so you are cultivating her that's what husband husband is from husbandry that's what groom's man is you know it's a man that ten tends takes care of so she wants to be taken care of yeah and you put her first the in ephesians 5 where they said husbands should love their wife 
that why that <clears throat> that love there is not emotional love. It's actually love of putting her first. It's a you dying to self, put her first. It's agape kind of love, the God kind of love. In fact, even, even specifically, they said love her the way Christ loved the church. Love the church. And how did Christ love the church? He yeah, died he for died. the church. So you're going to lay down your life. You're going to, if there's, if there's one, like we normally say, if there's one car in the house, you allow her to use it. Mm-hmm. If there's one plate of food in the house, you allow her to eat it. If there's a, is a small amount of money in the house, you allow her to determine how it's going to be spent. So you always revere her. You see, and this is why there's so much confusion about submission in marriage, because the men are coming with the idea that I'm the head. It means I'm the Lord. No. Head there is talking about responsibility, not yeah. authority. You are not yeah. supposed to lord it over her. You are supposed to be responsible for her. For her. So that's what God was trying. That's the picture God was trying to paint. Mm-hmm. You know, God is not our Lord. God, yes, he's our Lord, but he's not he's domineering. Really. God is not forcing us to no. do anything. He, he's he's loving us. Yes, he's loving us into everything. So um, submission ordinarily is not, a bad, it's not a bad word. In fact, when they said you are the head, it's like when Jesus said, um, those that are going to be the head, let them serve. So there's nothing wrong with that. So for the women that always argue why I'm in the head, it's the, they are saying, "Look, this man is supposed to serve you." I want you to be the head, though. Yeah. You serve me, you yes. Know. You see, your president is serving you. Your governor is serving you. Just that, as far as black people, you phrase that. Yeah, it's supposed to be serving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your president is supposed to be serving you. Your governor is. You know that black people for us we see leadership as domineering or yes, dominating yes, another person, but yes. the real meaning of leadership is scripturally. You see, you must interpret the Bible with the Bible. Mm. You can't interpret the Bible with culture. No. You see, in culture, sure. the leader is the do, is dominating everybody. Everybody's under their feet. No, but scripturally, just guys say, "He that must be the head amongst you, mm-hmm. let them serve." serve. Yeah. So I mean, why? And and when they say you submit to him, they're not saying you are a, you are a you know less of it. Yes, a doormat. What they are saying is that you are cooperating mm-hmm. with him to take care of you. So when you go to a salon, for instance, and you want to go and look good. You must submit to that hairdresser. That's the only yeah. way you're going to look good. Yeah. They'll say, okay, sit down here. Bend your head backward. Mm-hmm. Bend your bed. You're submitting to that hairdresser. Why? Because that per- you're following instructions. Because that person is trying to make you look good. He's taking care of you. of you. So that's the concept. God's idea is always perfect. Just like humans have a way, you know, the men are confusing what headship means. The women are confusing what submission means. And it turns to a big quarrel, mm-hmm. you know. So number one need of men, respect. Number one need of women is love. Okay. Number two. <laughs> uh, what's my number two? Mm. This one. Number two. I'm sure the women already know what this is, <laughs> but let's let you land. Yeah, and interestingly, people always argue. Look, I'm speaking for the men. Women don't argue with me. I'm a man, and I'm speaking for the men. If we say this thing is important, it's important. Number two, <laughs> major need for men is sex. Sex. I'm telling you, it's a major need for men. And I need to, just, you know, like I said, some people like to just argue. We don't cook up these things, guys. Please realize it. We don't cook it up. And I have nothing to gain by cooking it up. These are based on, like I said, science, even scriptures, and even um, statistics. In fact, the way I say statistics sometimes, even if you don't even any survey, just open your window. You will <laughs> see the statistics playing out. You know, Solomon said he learned a lot of things by opening his window, by looking at things happening. Outside. So just open your window. You will see enough examples to know. All right? <laughs> so... Number two need for a man is sex. Men don't just want sex. Men need sex. A man's sexual drive is way more than a woman's own. In fact, women can't even phantom. That's the truth. Because women are wired differently. So when, when we're talking about a man's sex drive, women say, we too have sex drive. Trust me. Eh? That thing you are calling sex drive is kindergarten. Wow. Is don't come, do, you, don't just go to your nursery school wow. with your short nigga. Wow. That thing you're calling sex drive <laughs> is a joke. <laughs> I'm telling you, I kid you not. A man's sexual drive, I go and check it scientifically, I'm not just making this up, guys. It's not on the same level at all. There are many reasons, and I'll give you as we go. So, but it's, it's even, even the, 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 the hormones flowing in us, men have testosterone, women have um, is it? estrogen. estrogen. They are not, they, 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 they make us behave differently, and this is scientific. So a man's sexual drive is totally different. There are so many studies, you can check this up for yourself. We are not the same at all. This doesn't mean, this doesn't mean women don't enjoy sex. This doesn't mean women don't like sex. Of course they do. But they are not on the same level at all. Mm-hmm. And the reasons, I'll give you some of the reasons. But the point is that sex is major for men. Women will say, is it food? Is it food for men? It is food. Interesting. I've heard a lot of men. <laughs> I've heard a lot of men say that in counseling. Yes. Because when, when the woman says, is it food? The man goes, yes, yes it, is, it food. is food. It is food for men. Men will always value things like sex more than food. Wow. Definitely. 
You know, and there are many reasons. Number one, the, 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 the sexual drive God gave men for some reason is more. I think the way God created it, that sex drive is what motivates a man to even want to, you know, have marriage, to have a relationship. Ordinarily, men don't marry for love. That's just how it works. You will not see anywhere, even from the first marriage in the Bible, it says it's not good for a man to be loved, get him a helper. It was never a love or a romantic thing. Men don't marry for love. Love as in terms of emotion. Yes, in terms of emotion. No, they marry for those functions. So one of it is sex. And God put that kind of sexual drive in the men to make sure that they stay in a relationship. In fact, by the time you see the, what the women's owner, you understand. You see, women want to, women offer love. Women, women offer sex to get love. Men offer love to get, to get sex. sex. That's how it works. So a man is professing love, professing marriage, because he's going to get sex in return. A woman is profess, giving sex because she wants love. That's why in the middle of a sexual activity of boy and a girl, most times you hear things like, what are we? What are we? <laughs> it's simple. Open your window. Don't ask if you open your window, you see enough <laughs> practical experience to tell you what I'm telling you. You hear what are we? You hear what are we now? Don't just use me and dump me. Who, 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 yeah, what are we doing? Who says things like, after all I did? And what they're talking about is sex. Is that I slept with you? Because it's a man to give things in the relationship, but it's not the same. You know, check, check those sentences. What are we? What who are we now? Oh, you know, after you use me and dump me. After all, you know? So women... Um, m well, yes, go ahead. I, no, no, go no, ahead. I was going to say something silly. <laughs> I was going to really silly. Because I was going to say, could it also be that because men actually do just do most of the dumping and the using? I'm just saying. Yes, but it, that takes me to the next point. One of the reasons why sex drive is also higher in men is that men don't see sex as something that, you know, it, it's not an emotional thing for them. It's a physical thing. So this is why men are more susceptible to cheating because they don't have to be emotionally involved with whoever they're having sex with. It's more a physical thing for them. But for women, sex is also an emotional thing. So this is why it seems women are generally more, you know, um, faithful. Generally, it seems so. That they're more faithful. Because for them to effectively be cheating, they have to first connect with you emotionally. You guys have to first... Do for men, it is different. Now, there are studies to show these things. Women are generally more selective in their sexual partners. So a woman will want... Is he rich? You know, that's why <laughs> I, forgot, I was talking to some guys. I forgot what it was. It was a men's gist. And I was just with them. I said, you know, women, I, how do I say it? That women are attracted to old men that have money. Not that they're not attracted to old men. Oh, yeah. So the old man that is a, make, that is a security guard it's ain't going to have any yeah. temptation with any uh, university girl. Mm -hmm. they, they will not give her. But if it's an old man that has money, you see, women are generally more selective in their sexual partners. But for men, men are totally not selective. So a man can sleep with his housemate, sleep with his... Eh, eh, no matter the woman, a man can because it's a physical thing. He's not interested in liking her or having something with her. It's a physical affair. So it's different. And there are a whole lot of other studies. Studies, there are studies that show, for instance, that um, when it comes to spirituality, that a woman's spirituality doesn't affect, you know, um, her sexuality as much as a guy's own. All right. So there are things like that. On that study again shows that that's why nuns are more faithful than priests. The sexual pressures are different. Now these are studies, and this is not me making it up. These are studies available you can check out. So I'm just going to show you that men, pornography largely is a men-driven business. All right? I can go on and on and on. You know, prostitution. Now this doesn't mean there are no uh, women looking for paid sex, but it's not big enough to power the industry. It's usually men paying for sex because that need is so important for men. So it, an industry can be gotten from it. So prostitution, pornography, and many more things like that are powered by men's need for sexual satisfaction. I can go on and on. The point is that it's a major need for a man. So by the time you're going to... And we're talking about marriage, okay? We're, we're not encouraging you if you're single to be given sex. No. One of, the, one of the best ways you know if a man really loves you in fact is to be told sex and see if he likes anything more than sex about you. Mm, because so, sex can be distracting. Yes. You know? He can have it with anybody. And he can promise anything when he wants to have it. Mm -hmm. All right? I need to share more about this. About sex? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's a need it's for men. men. It's men that have the need now. Everybody wants to share. But you have to for respect, so please. <laughs> oh, no, they say men have, men have need for sex. So, in marriage, give your husband sex. Because, I, I mean, okay, to be honest, um, I think it's not just just the need for sex. I think it's also the need for variety in sex. Yeah. So, try not, to, not, try not to be boring in bed. Yeah. You know? I actually have a list of things I'm going to give as advice to women when it comes to sex. Okay, so go All ahead. Right. So, yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> I just want to tell you had some. Okay, so generally, so another thing that happens is that women seek 
you know, connection. Women seek connection before sex. So a woman wants us to talk. A woman wants you to connect. Take me on a date, you know. That's my point, but go ahead. Yeah. You're already teaching what women need to so go. Okay, ahead. but hold on, hold on. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> but I, I'm, the point, point I'm trying to make is that, but for men, on the other hand, sex itself is the connection. So you see, he's really particular about sex. And three quick things I would say to women that are married here and you want to meet your husband's need. Number one, it's always important to initiate sex, all right? You initiate sometimes. When you're a married person, don't always wait for him to initiate. Men are thrilled when you initiate. And remember, you can't only wait till when you feel good, you can't only wait till when he's behaving well, all right? So, as so can I just throw in a question mm -hmm. there for the women? Yeah. Because I found a lot of women, not a lot, but some women have sent me messages saying, when I initiate sex with my husband, then I hear him, I hear him make comments like, where are you learning that one from? And it kind of becomes suspicious. Yes, just so show, in a situation show him this video. Like that, show him this video. Oh is where God. he learned it from. So that's, oh God. that's easy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so initiate, very important, all right? Now, I understand that, yes, there are men that will reject and yeah. all that, but you see, those, yeah, those, are usually like signs of, those are usually signs of a different problem going on somewhere, okay? It's not normal for a man in a, in a proper marriage with his wife, you know, to reject sex. It's not normal. And it's not that you're having sex every day, as in normal spacing of sex, and you initiate and he doesn't want. That's something what's, else. What's the normal spacing? Yes, well, there's really no normal spacing, but I believe that for an older couple, at least once a week is fine. For a young couple, you should do definitely more than once a week, two, three times a week. You know, for a normal couple, yeah. Some people have to do it every day. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just asking these questions because I know that there will be some. Some people have it. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult to wife. fix it. But if you're young and it depends on time, you know, how much time do you guys have? How much time do you guys spend together? Do you, uh, you know, is he working in a different city? Is he working? Is he go out in the morning and come back late at night, tired? So you know, those factors have come into play. But like I said, for an average, averagely old couple, at least once a week is fine. You know, for a young couple, more than once a week, definitely, definitely. You know. So number one, initiate. Number two, please uh, pay attention to your appearance. Uh, men are moved by what they see. So pay attention. So um, women make the mistake, they look good when they're going out and when they're staying home with their husband, they look good. And so they're pleasing people that don't matter and they're not taking care of the person that matters. So please look good at home, all right? You can't always tie it up and wear a shower cap. <laughs> Those ugly shower cap, no. Because I don't think you wear shower cap. I think satin bonnet. Satin bonnet is shower cap. <laughs> it, that's what we know. <laughs> satin bonnet, please. No way that's it. Oh my all the time. God. All right. So oh, hair net. Hair net. All funny things. Please look good at home. All right, look at that home. So that's number two. Then number three, please be willing to try new things. Very important. Be willing to try new things. Be adventurous. You know, uh, because men always like the variety. So be adventurous, try new things, keep it fun. All right. So that's my three advice I have, sexually speaking. Okay, so all we're right. done with sex. Yes. So the same men need sex too. So, mm -hmm. so give your husband sex. <laughs> so that he doesn't go and buy it. Outside. outside, yes. So. <laughs> I don't believe I said that. Yeah. Okay, so for women, um, I would say women need intimacy. And I think this is where we need to establish with the men mm. that sex and intimacy are not the same, same thing. thing. Especially mm. because for men, sex is more physical than yes. it is emotional. So a man feels like when he's having sex with you, he has connected with you. But for a woman, you can have sex with her and she even feels used. Yes. She doesn't feel connected yes. to you. She feels raped. She doesn't feel connected to you. Mm. She feels like you who haven't pulled her apart even more because most, well, in quite a lot of men would have sex and be spent and just turn, turn over and sleep, sleep. Yes, no. which isn't what the woman <laughs> is looking for. She's, she's expecting that because I have given you sex, yes. what you will give to me after that is intimacy. intimacy yes. So she's expecting that you will cuddle her. She's expecting that you will hold on to her. You should be expecting that you would at least have a five-minute conversation yes. after sex, maybe telling her how beautiful she is. Although his man's brain is as yes. gone off that time. <laughs> If you ask, charge his spare brain, you can bring that one. needs, you know, yeah. she needs you to at least, okay, even if you're not having, I mean, yes. I'm not expecting deep conversation <laughs> at that you, time. When like who will win the next election? What no. do you think? <laughs> or the impact of Taliban? I'm telling you. <laughs> no, we're not, we're, not, we're not having that kind of conversation. Um, we're just saying, you know, just have those, mm. even if it's just telling her how beautiful she is and yes. what she means to you and all of that. Or just holding her, mm -hmm. you know, till, mm -hmm. she, till she, you both fall asleep. I would have said yeah. till you, you fall, till she falls asleep. But most times, men snores off first. Yeah. So for women, intimacy mm -hmm. is key. Um, we want non-sexual touch. We don't want every time you hold me. I don't want it to end in sex. Mm. I want it sometimes to just be a, a cuddle. Sometimes you just hold my hand. Sometimes you just and also don't be afraid of public 
display of, of affection. affection. So PDA is important mm. for women. I mean, not every woman, to be honest, but most women yes. wouldn't mind you putting your hand on her shoulder. She wouldn't mind you in a crowd holding her hand Hands. when you're walking or, you know, grabbing her. It's a, yeah. You know. It's so, a kiss. A little kiss here and there. Um, so women really want that kind of intimacy. They want to be connected to you emotionally, just mm. beyond the body. Okay, yes. not just skin on skin now, but we want something that connects our hearts. So I mean, we expect those kind of connections. Another level of intimacy that women want is spiritual intimacy. A mm. lot of women complain about their husbands not praying with them. Mm. There's something very sexy about a man who takes his place as the priest of the home. Mm. A man who tells you this is what God is saying. A man who, when you are going through something, he can pray over you. Mm. There's just something very attractive. You know, which is why, interestingly, a lot of women connect with their pastors. Yes. You know, they seem to respect the man. They seem to want to do things and so into life and buy gifts and do all kinds of things. Yes. Because when she has a need, she knows that he will show up spiritually. And you can get that same effect, if not better, yes. with your you partner. Should. You know, because you are the priest of our home. So women want spiritual connection, spiritual intimacy. She wants a woman that she, and you know, a lot of times people focus on the fact that Oh, but we pray together, meaning maybe we do family devotion together, we pray with the kids. It's not that kind of prayer. Sometimes just lying in bed and holding each other and just praying, there's a connection that we want that is deeper than just face value. Mm. We want that kind of intimacy mm. where you are not afraid to have conversations with God in front of me. Mm. You're not afraid to have deep conversations. You're not afraid to just look me in the eye. You know, some, sometimes, I don't know if it was... I don't know if it was one marriage conference or something, and that they asked men to, look, oh, we went somewhere, and we asked men, I think we went somewhere to minister, and we asked men to look into their wives' eyes. They couldn't do it for two minutes. Yeah. A lot of men could not look, you know, just take a minute now and just stop and just look into your wife's eyes. Yes, if both of you are watching. Yes, if both of you are watching, just leave us alone, just for two minutes. Yeah. Try and see if you can time it for two minutes. Pause the video. Pause. Oga, obey what they are telling you. <laughs> now, look into her eyes. Look into our eyes. Don't say anything. <laughs> Just stay connected. Just look into each other's yeah. eyes for like two minutes. Mm -hmm. This is the point where they do that outing. That cricket <laughs> thing. Then, after you have done that now, kiss her. If you're married, though. You're not married. Don't kiss her. Ah, it's marriage people we're talking ah, to. But is, anybody can watch the video. Okay. Married people now kiss her. Mm -hmm. You see that that's... that's she, she's happy. Yes. There's more connection. So, call my account mm. number ladies later. <laughs> So women, women yeah. really just so want emotional, yes, emotional connect, intimacy, uh, intimacy, physical, uh, non-sexual non -sexual intimacy, intimacy and then of course spiritual intimacy. If they are Christians, yeah. of course, yes, yes. usually they yes. want something deep. deeper than yeah, yeah. So than just two of us. Yeah, we, 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 it's 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 so powerful. You know, women are just deeper beings, and I think that's what men don't. Because for men, like I said, men are men are a bit more straightforward and simple, and this. This is almost in every area. You know, men don't are not as detailed. They are not as complicated or complex. You know, everything about a woman is generally a bit more diversified and complex. Generally, you know, so men find it hard to be able to fill up a woman's um, needs because he is so straightforward. He just feels, oh, life should be so easy. But no, a woman is deeper than you. She feels deeper. She her needs are more, de are, are more complex. So you have to go the extra mile. This is what it means by being the husband man and caring for her. So you have to go the extra mile of being in touch with aspects of yourself that normally you would not be in touch with. So, you know, meeting that emotional need, you know, we, we still had that today. I still prayed over you today, you know, oh, and she just slept off. Oh, she was awake yes. before, <laughs> but as I just laid my hands on her, called her down, was praying for her and speaking in tongues over her. The next night I just said, hey, oh, she was... Oh God! I said, I won't, I won't even lie. I won't even lie. You know? I was going to try to pray with him, and then Jesus uh, said, "What's wrong with you? Can't you just rest and let somebody take care of you?" Yeah. So let me relax. I'm yes. taking care of you. So yeah. I just laid there yeah. and just hearing, you know, both the physical and the spiritual cover. Yes. Hearing somebody praying over me, a yeah. hand on my head and a hand yes. wrapped around me. At some point, I remember I even wanted to stand yes. up and you held me yeah. down and held me back. And I was yes. like, "Oh, thank you, Jesus." Yes. So great to be married to you. Yeah. God so, <laughs> so it's like that. And you, you start to pray by the Spirit about things that are in her mm -hmm. heart. You know, things like that. Things that are bothering her or that you know she's thinking about. Yeah. So that brings so much comfort. Brings so much. So um, women like that connection, you see. So um, it's important. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Number three. Hmm. I like this one. Okay. 
men need intellectual and recreational companionship. Very important. Intellectual and recreational companionship. It's a major need for men. All right? Men like to play. Men like people that play with them. Women like people that pray with them. Men like people that play with them. So if you notice, men's hangouts are always around sports, around play, around cars, around inanimate things. Very important, very inanimate things. So men are not as personal as women like to be. When women gather to talk, they're talking about people. But when women gather to talk, they're not always talking about people, they're talking about things, about sports clubs, about cars, about positions. So men are generally, even from childhood, if you notice the toys that men use, very impersonal. Gun, trucks, things like that. But all the things that, they, all the toys that women, women have when they're young are dolls, mm. you know, uh, um, kitchen, and things. They are always personal. All right, so very important. So men like recreational intellectual stimulation. They like a woman that can, they can have intelligent conversations with. It mustn't be love. It mustn't be romance. It mustn't be about other people. It can be intelligent things, ideas, business concepts, solutions. You know, men love that a lot. And I love a woman that can play with them. You need to, if, if he's a football lover, you need to know his club. You need to know, you know, um, what club he supports, what's going on in football. Be a bit interested in the kind of things he's interested in. All right, business, money. Those are things men like. Very personal things, but, you know, as a woman, you need to train yourself. Women like money too, Shabba. Women like money, but you see, the reason why men are want money and women are very That's different. different things, yeah. <laughs> you know, so you need to be in touch with him. He likes recreational. They did a study one time. You know, they put men in the room, put women in the room, and they found out the women all sat face-to-face. -face. Women like face-to-face -face connection. So women all were facing each other to talk. And this is why women confront men, because they connect when they confront. Men, on the other hand... Don't do well with face-to-face. -face. Men do better with shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder communication. So what happened is when they put those men in the room, they all sat side by side. They didn't face each other. Because that's how men have camaraderie. They have, well, let's, we are pals. We are not facing each other. We are doing something together. All right? Men like doing together. Hmm. So they don't, yeah. <laughs> this is interesting because I've been struggling. I've been wanting to... <laughs> Turn <laughs> face, yeah. <laughs> men like we're doing it together. It also, men sit that bar like sitting. Is, is a man idea. Women on the other hand like oh, to yeah. sit. Yes. Yeah. Men like to sit. That bar sitting that we're all looking, we're not looking at each other. Mm -hmm. We're just talking shoulder to shoulder. But women on the, women on the other hand like that face to face. Yes. You know, yes, the feel. <laughs> turn and look at me. Yeah. And why me, I'm enjoying looking at the camera and some of the ugly producers and cameramen here. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking, you know? So, but that, that's how men... <laughs> that's a joke for the cut out this thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> for the sound guy cut my this thing. So, oh. um, <laughs> you know, so men enjoy shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder communication. Just through... Even they did it with the same thing with kids and found out it was the same with kids. Oh, really? Girls, yes. That's the girls sat down face-to-face. -face. The boys sat down side-by-side, -side, yes. Yeah. All right. They just left them to do it by themselves. So, the point is that men like that recreational thing. We can go for sports together. That's why if men want to go out, they, they, are, they are going out is based on what we are going to do together. What women's on is based on what we are going to talk about. So when a woman comes back from, a, from an event, you ask her, what did you people happen? She will tell you what they said. If you ask the guy what happened, she will tell you what they did. All right. So uh, that's how it goes. Yeah. So intelli intelligence, intellectual conversations, then play with him. Play with him. He likes that a lot. That playing one, eh? It's, it's a major thing. Yes. Especially, well, it depends also if you I mean, all men, but especially if you're married to someone with a sanguine personality. Yes. Someone who Adventures. likes to play. But at the beginning, you used to play with me, you know, but you changed. I don't play After game. you got what you wanted. What did I want? Husband <laughs> and children. <laughs> You me. just stopped. Before, Pasmita used to go on power bike riding. She would ride bikes with me. We used to go to all kinds of crazy places. Um, mm -hmm. We ride both in Nigeria and out of Nigeria. And sometimes in the night, 9 o'clock, we'll enter motorcycle, you know, power bike, and, ten, and blow. Around 9 10, ten, we'll hit the road, you know, in that dark night. You know, um, when we traveled sometimes to Dubai and go, we did one half feet mountain. It was crazy. Very high mountain that was spiral like this. And when and we were riding when bike. We were coming down, what was I saying? I've never been this in my life. <laughs> How did I get yeah, it? Yeah, but, but, but you were, she used to tell us fun things. But immediately she got her children, got her husband and children. No, that's so wrong. She knows she used to know cars, know everything. She doesn't even know any car. Hey, you can't know the name of cars. That. It's true now. No, wait, wait, wait. Your sins okay, no, but women are, women are here, so women would understand this. When it was just two of us, we could do anything. Now we have children, so much stuff we could die. We could train them. So, <laughs> you know? Not that anything will happen to you, but I yeah. mean, 
I mean, as we get really, older. Yeah, but you just enjoy when you used to do this. Ah, thing. still I'm do. Serious. They don't do. You don't nah, do that. you can't no, say yeah, that. Very serious. Wow. <laughs> On camera, you said yes, that no. on camera. Even actually, don't you actually play that awful game that the, but you? But I played now. No, but after much persistence. Yeah, because I don't like to lose. Yeah, what's the most no matter most of the wins now? The parents they were doing something. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I don't like to lose. So that's why I'm very bad at board games and things. I don't mm. like to lose. I have, if I'm going to do it, I have a plan that I'm going to win this thing. I would mm. like to play something that I know that I'm not good at. <laughs> you know, but I still played it now. Yeah, I did, but yeah, after no. much persuasion. Oh, God. <laughs> how many people did this on camera? Yes. People should not put so this on camera. So basically, because we're like recreational and intellectual, you know, companionship. If he's a football person, no football. You know, yeah, you used to go I to mean, studio. Uh-huh. Yeah, you used to go and watch uh-huh. matches with me in Etihad Stadium. And but that was before. Have you go, well, before the, the last few ones, did you go? The last eh? few ones, you didn't go. I went now. When did you go? When did you tell me, yeah, let's go? And I said, okay. no. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but I can't believe it. I can't believe it. No problem. He's not well, true. He used to, he used wow. to go. Well, he was a serious wow. Man City fan. But now, wow. don't wow. they go for matches? Where was the last time? COVID has not allowed us to travel. No problem. The COVID is going down. But so. okay, even the last one, I was pregnant with David and I went with you. I carried my big tummy and I went. Yeah, that was then. Because like, you didn't have children then. You were just pregnant. I had two children. Came. I had two, two girls. Oh, yeah, God. go to the next thing for a woman. Yeah, see, oh, God. <laughs> Is the thing men men mm. men don't remember things. They don't remember your good. It's only bad. The, they will bring uh, it. Oh, by the way, the, the, the scripture reference for this is um, Titus chapter two, um, chapter three. Yeah, chapter chapter. Oh, sorry, chapter chapter two from verse three to five. Um, the Bible says that let, let the older women, teach you know, the teach the younger women how to love mm-hmm. their husbands. All right. So let the older women, because they have they will have experience, let them teach the younger women how to love their husbands. And you see the word love there. It's not the same as in Ephesians 5. The word love in that title is the word filio. That is friendship kind of love. So the Bible confirms this. That, you know, they say let the younger men learn to be friends with their husbands. That's what men need. They need that friendship. They want to be able to talk to you without it being emotional. They should be able to bounce things off you without you making it about love or about our family, about you don't love me anymore. You want to just travel. What of us? You are abandoned. You know, they want to be able to talk to you like that without it being emotional. So um, the love there is filio, is friendship kind of love. And um, Solomon also said in Proverbs 11, I think uh, verse 22, he said, a be- he said, a beautiful face on an empty head is like putting a gold ring, you know, on a pig's nose. So he's saying, you know, men like women that are smart, that are intelligent. All right. So I hope that helps. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So for women, number three would be Honest women need honest and open communication. Mm. So they want you to talk to them honestly. Um, oh, I wish men would just stop trying to manage us. Mm. You know, too many men have entered bad situations because they're trying to manage their wives. Mm. They don't want to be honest. They don't want to be open. I can't count the number of men who have wrecked themselves with the famous words, I got this. You mm. don't got nothing. You got absolutely nothing. And until men, until men understand that, even that, that word, I got this, is stressing us. Mm. Like somebody said, you are stressing us by thinking you got this or by getting this. I don't even know how she said it anymore. Mm-hmm. But it's so stressful when um, a man thinks he can handle it. We want you to be open. No matter what the problem is, share it. That's the point. That's the point of marriage. So no matter how bad the situation is, we want to know. We want to know mm. what you're thinking. We want to. I remember when I first got married, I always used to tell you, think with me. And mm. I just see you lost in touch. So yeah. like, I say, I'm thinking. I say, think with mm. me. Yeah. Just let me know what's going on in your mind. And mm. the problem is that men usually like to talk for solution. Yes. And so they feel like if you can't give them a solution, they don't want yeah. to have that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But even if I can't give you a solution, maybe I can pray. Maybe yeah. even the counsel I have, or maybe I know someone who knows. Yeah. You just can never tell. You can't even tell if I have the solution if or you don't tell yes. me the problem. Mm-hmm. Because you don't read minds as well. So we want you to be vulnerable. We want you to be able to tell us, I had a hard day at work. Um, and this, don't just come home and act all macho and act like you got it. Like I said, your gutting it is really stressful for all of us. <laughs> Especially because after you've got it, you end up not gutting it. And then mm. it now becomes a problem for us. When you could have told me in the beginning when you didn't have a problem. So a lot of women I know complain about this. And we really need you to be vulnerable. We need you to be comfortable with being open. Mm. We need you to be honest. Mm. If it's hard, tell us. Mm. If you don't want to be here, tell us. If you don't, don't, don't string me along and make me believe that everything is okay when everything is not okay. Okay, okay? so it's important that you, 
you you set aside quality time to have conversations intimate conversations women need that we need that time away maybe that would be a good time for date nights you know i i find that a lot of people get married and they stop dating mm. they get married and they stop having those intimate conversations when mm. you go on date night and i and i and i really feel like it's really helpful it can be dinner it can be a movie it can be just sitting going for a drive yeah. together mm. you know having conversations that are not about work not about children about both of you your deepest fears your deepest desires are you happy what did you want what did you in all these years we've been together what would i could i have done better you know are you happy with, are you happy here you know having those kind of intimate conversations and being able to tell us don't manage us women really need to know what's going on in your mind yeah and one of the reasons why men struggle with open and honest communication is because uh, men internalize a lot so we talk a lot in our heads mm. um, I, I always say that you know adam was alone in the garden for a long time mm -hmm. so is not it wasn't used to expressing w women on the other hand from the first day she landed yeah. she had somebody to talk to so women like to talk but men on the other hand um, are not used to talking out loud they internalize a lot so um, it takes a lot of conscious working on and training for a man to understand i can actually just share with you how i feel you know and part of the reason why men are not open and honest also is that they are afraid of losing that respect you see that's why we're saying that you know men do a lot of things for honor they want to remain in that place, in that high place. So they feel sometimes if they share their weaknesses, share their struggles, that the woman won't respect them anymore. Um, so a lot of times it happens. You know, the woman will use what they're saying against them. Yeah, know. but I also need men to understand the fact that the same way you need sex or you need me to play with you is the same way I need you to be to honest with mm -hmm. me. I need you to be open with me. And I also need you to remember that I'm a woman. I will never be a man. I may never even handle what you're going to tell me the way a man yes, would. Lord, yes. But it's up to you to now be responsible enough to know that, oh, sh and understanding enough to know that she's a woman. This does not mean that next time I shouldn't still open up. I should just understand that this is how she's going to take it. I shouldn't expect more mm. than that. And then when she's calmed down, have a proper conversation with her that this, these are some of the things that put me off from telling you because you, I know you will panic. Mm. You know? But that's no reason not to be honest. Yeah. Even if you feel like I'm going to disrespect you, that may happen once or twice. But that would be a good place to also let her know that, you know what, that's one of the reasons why I don't say these things to you. And if you keep doing this, then I'm going to be forced to recoil. And that would be a wake-up call for her, if she's mm. a reasonable or sensible woman. Mm. That's the truth. Open and honest communication. Women love it when you're open. And honest. honest. Open mm. and honest. Open and honest about everything. Um, your not feelings. if I'm fat. Because I ask you, am I fat? No. You think I'm fat? <laughs> you're not supposed to be honest about that. <laughs> That's the time you're honest. Yes. Well, you know, well, open about every other thing. Open about how you, how you feel, yeah. about the finances, about if you're facing a temptation. Yeah. You know, open. If you're facing a temptation. That's Very so important. vital. Because a lot of yeah. men think that they can, they can yeah, deal with it. The truth is it. you can't handle it. Mm. And sin thrives in secrecy. Once you expose something, it loses its power over you. Yeah. So ex if you, if you uh, can be honest about temptations, be honest about fininances. Mm. A lot of women are spending buying, buying things that they don't know that their husbands can't, can't afford, afford it. it. Yes. Because the man is not open about yes. the state of things yeah. financially. So she just believes that he's, he's got it. And even, even, when he can even when he can afford it, a woman would really like to be a part of what Process, is going on. So yeah. that openness helps her feel she's a part of it. So yeah. it's very important that you carry her along. Don't mm -hmm. just make decisions over at the top of her head. Yeah. You know, she wants to be part of it. Say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? You know, bounce everything off her. Women enjoy the process. You know, men enjoy the project. Mm. So please carry her along. That process is the main part she wants to be a part of. All right? So that's the end of the first video. So we'll continue with the four other things. Four left? Yeah, four left. Four other things in the next video. Bye, guys. Yep. See ya.